What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're going to be jumping into something kind of cool. A motivational speech. One of the best motivational speeches, apparently. Admiral McRaven leaves the audience speechless. Uh, I think that I've seen a, a different video, maybe of a piece of one of his speeches that was only like two or three minutes long. This one is 15 minutes long, so I'm honestly not sure what we're about to dive into. But let's jump into it anyway, because if there's something that we that we definitely want to push on the channel, it's motivation. It's inspiration. It's those good things, those good vibes that people need to hear and those messages that we might need from time to time. So I do appreciate this one. Uh, much, much love to Sven for this. Let's jump in. Let's check it out together. Let's roll. What starts here changes the world. I have a few suggestions that may help you on your way to a better world. And while these lessons were learned during my time in the military, I can assure you that it matters not whether you ever served a day in uniform. It matters not your gender, your ethnic or religious background, your orientation or your social status. Our struggles in this world are similar and the lessons to overcome those struggles and to move forward changing ourselves and changing the world around us will apply equally to all 100 percent, something that we say i don't care where you came from who you love what you dress like who you worship i don't care what i care is that we have more in common than we have any other way seriously if you look at us everything is the same i don't understand how people look at somebody and say uh I don't like you because of this. Do you realize the saying that you don't that, that you can't get along with or love somebody because of the color of their skin? It's like saying that you can't love somebody with blue eyes or brown eyes or red hair. That's absolutely ridiculous. The stupidest thing that I've ever heard in the world is to hate somebody because of the color of their skin. Or because of whatever God they believe in. How does any of it affect you? It doesn't. We need each other. We have to come together. We need this unity. We need this kind of a message. Come on. Changing ourselves and changing the world around us will apply equally to all. So here are the 10 lessons I learned from basic SEAL training that hopefully will be of value to you as you move forward in life. Every morning in SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam veterans, would show up in my barracks room, and the first thing they'd I know do that was scene all bed. too well. If you did it right, the corners would be square, the covers would be pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. It seemed a little ridiculous at the time, particularly in light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough, battle-hardened SEALs. But the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. Absolutely. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. That's right. And if, if you can't do the little things right, you might as well just go ahead and get rid of. You might as well go ahead and get rid of any not any want to get the big things right. Focus on the small things. And those small things all equal out two bigger things this is a beautiful speech so far i'm like get, get you choked up because he's speaking so real and so blunt and so direct it's not that hard to get up every day and start your your day off on the right foot by making your bed i was in boot camp i did the whole marine corps thing i know exactly what he's talking about when it comes to making your bed it seemed so menial then but now it's a daily thing that I do. It's a daily thing that's important to me. It's been built into me, and it does. It helps you get up. It helps you say, you know what? I'm not going to crawl back under those covers. They're made. And you know what? When I come home tonight, that makes it even better when I jump back in. If by chance you have a miserable day, 
you will come home to a bed that is made. <laughs> that See? You made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. This is beautiful. During SEAL training, the students, during training, the students are all broken down into boat crews. Each crew is seven students, three on each side of a small rubber boat, and one coxswain to help guide the dinghy. Every day, your boat crew forms up on the beach and is instructed to get through the surf zone and paddle several miles down the coast. In the winter, the surf off San Diego can get to be eight to 10 feet high, and it is exceedingly difficult to paddle through the plunging surf unless everyone digs in. Every paddle must be synchronized to the stroke count of the coxswain. Everyone must exert equal effort or the boat will turn against the wave and be unceremoniously dumped back on the beach. For the boat to make it to its destination, everyone must paddle. You can't change the world alone. You will need some help. Yes, you and will. To get from your starting point to your destination takes friends, colleagues, the goodwill of strangers, and a strong coxswain to guide you. If you want to change the world, find someone to help you paddle. Absolutely find someone to help you get through life. We've already said this, shouldering the weight, shouldering all of the problems, shouldering all of those little things that are going to pop up in your life is a lot easier if you have someone else to help you carry said weight. It's a two-person lift sometimes, sometimes more. Surround yourself with those positive people that want to see you successful, that want to see you reach your dreams, that want to see you live in life for the right reasons. Surround yourself with those people. They're going to be there to help you up. It's going to be a hell of a lot easier to win if you have them there helping you paddle. Right? For real, for real. Over a few weeks of difficult training, my SEAL class, which started with 150 men, was down to just 42. There were now six boat crews of wow. seven men each. I was in the boat with the tall guys, but the best boat crew we had was made up of the little guys, the Munchkin crew, we called them. No one was over five foot five. The Munchkin boat crew had one American Indian, one African American, one Polish American, one Greek American, one Italian American, and two tough kids from the Midwest. They out paddled, out ran, and out swam all the other boat crews. The big men in the other boat crews would always make good-natured fun of the tiny little flippers the munchkins put on their tiny little feet prior to every swim. But somehow these little guys from every corner of the nation and the world always had the last laugh, swimming faster than everyone and reaching the shore long before the rest of us. SEAL training was a great equalizer. Nothing mattered but your will to succeed, not your color, not your ethnic background, not your education, not your social status. If you want to change the world, measure a person by the size of their heart, not by the size of their flippers. Several times a week, the instructors would line up the class and do a uniform inspection. It was exceptionally thorough. Your hat had to be perfectly starched, your uniform immaculately pressed, your belt buckle shiny and void of any smudges. But it seemed that no matter how much effort you put into starching your hat or pressing your uniform or polishing your belt buckle, it just wasn't good enough. The instructors would find something wrong. For failing the uniform inspection, the student had to run, fully clothed, into the surf zone. Whoa. Then wet from head to toe, roll around on the beach until every part of your body was covered with sand. The effect was known as a sugar cookie. <laughs> You stayed in the uniform the rest of the day, cold, wet, and sandy. There were many a student who just couldn't accept the fact that all their efforts were in vain, that no matter how hard they tried to get the uniform right, it went unappreciated. Those students didn't make it through training. Those students didn't understand the purpose of the drill. You were never going to succeed. You were never going to have a perfect uniform. The instructors weren't going to allow it. Sometimes, no matter how well you prepare, or how well you perform, you still end up as a sugar cookie. <laughs> it's just the way life is sometimes. If you want to change the world, get over being a sugar cookie and keep moving forward. Every day during training, Facts. you were challenged with multiple physical events, long runs, long swims, obstacle courses, 
hours of calisthenics, something designed to test your mettle. Every event had standards, times you had to meet. If you failed to meet those times, those standards, your name was posted on a list. And at the end of the day, those on the list were invited to a circus. A circus was two hours of additional calisthenics designed to wear you down, to break your spirit, to force you to quit. No one wanted a circus. A circus meant that for that day, you didn't measure up. A circus meant more fatigue, and more fatigue meant that the following day would be more difficult and more circuses were likely. But at some time during SEAL training, everyone, everyone made the circus list. But an interesting, an interesting thing happened to those who were constantly on the list. Over time, those students who did two hours of extra calisthenics I know what he's gonna got say. stronger and stronger. The pain of the circuses built inner strength and physical resiliency. Life is filled with circuses. You will fail. You will likely fail often. It will be painful. It will be discouraging. At times, it will test you to your very core. But if you don't, if you want to change the world, don't be afraid of the circuses. Do not be afraid to fail. Absolutely true. Failure is seriously going to happen. It's a sad fact of life. Not everybody can get through life unscathed. Not everybody is going to make it with everything that they want. Not everybody is going to reach their dreams. Why? Because a lot of people let that failure get to them. Once you consider yourself a failure, that's a problem. Look at your failures and grow from them. Step up. Use them as a stepping stone to greatness. That's exactly what you got to do. I love Admiral McRaven. Like, seriously, I would love to sit down and pick his brain. Just listen to this speech that he's put together. He's given out the most valuable life lessons of all time. You're going to fail. You can't be afraid to fail. That's like saying you're going to be afraid to eat. It's You got to eat. Everybody has to make those decisions. And sometimes, obviously, you're not going to make the right decision. Not everybody. Nobody can. Nobody does. Everybody makes mistakes. It's whether or not you let them get to you. And whether or not you let them set you back. Or whether or not you focus on them as something, some sort of anchor that's holding you back. That stuff back there doesn't matter anymore. Focus on the stuff that's ahead of you. At least twice a week, the trainees were required to run the obstacle course. The obstacle course contained 25 obstacles, including a 10-foot wall, a 30-foot cargo net, a barbed wire crawl, to name a few. But the most challenging obstacle was the slide for life. Ooh. It had a three-level, 30-foot tower at one end and a one-level tower at the other. In between was a 200-foot-long rope. You had to climb the three-tiered tower, and once at the top, you grabbed the rope, swung underneath the rope and pulled yourself hand over hand until you got to the other end. The record for the obstacle course had stood for years when my class began in 1977. The record seemed unbeatable until one day a student decided to go down the slide for life head first. Instead of swinging his body underneath the rope and inching his way down, he bravely mounted the top of the rope and thrust himself forward. It was a dangerous move. Listen, I've done the slide for life, and that is the dangerous. Da I would have never in a million years thought about climbing on the top of that rope. When you're up there looking down at the water below you, knowing that, hey, there's a chance that you're going to fall. Hanging underneath is a lot better because you ain't got to look down. Like, seriously. Plus, your whole top of your balance being on top of the rope. That guy's something else. Not bravely me. mounted the top of the rope and thrust himself forward. It was a dangerous move, seemingly foolish and fraught with risk. Yeah. Failure could mean injury and being dropped from the course. Without hesitation, the student slid down the rope perilously fast. Instead of several minutes, it only took him half that time. And by the end of the course, he had broken the record. If you want to change the world, hey. sometimes you have to slide down the obstacles head first. All righty. During the land warfare phase of training, the students are flown out to San Clemente Island, which lies off the coast of San Diego. The waters off San Clemente are a breeding ground for the great white sharks. To pass SEAL training, there are a series of long swims that must be completed. One is the night swim. 
Before the swim, the instructors joyfully brief the students on all the species of sharks that inhabit the waters off San Clemente. They assure you, however, that no student has ever been eaten by a shark. At least not that they can remember. <laughs> but you are also taught that if a shark begins to circle your position, stand your ground. Do not swim away. Do not act afraid. And if the shark, hungry for a midnight snack, darts towards you, then summons up all your strength and punch him in the snout, and he will turn and swim away. There are a lot of sharks in the world. If you hope to complete the swim, you will have to deal with them. So if you want to change the world, don't back down from the sharks. It's 100% true in everything that this man is saying. There are so many people out there that thrive on seeing people fail, that thrive on being negative, that thrive on being a hater and troll. They love being called a troll. Stay away from those people. And if you do come in contact with them, let them know that you're not playing around. Face them down. If you come in, I hate bullies of any sort, whether it's online, in real life. There's absolutely no reason to live your life with such a chaotic mindset. And if you're out there and they got the chaotic mindset, I hope someone sets you straight. As Navy SEALs, one of our jobs is to conduct underwater attacks against enemy shipping. We practice this technique ex extensively during training. The ship attack mission is where a pair of SEAL divers is dropped off outside an enemy harbor and then swims well over two miles underwater using nothing but a depth gauge and a compass to get to the target. During the entire swim, even well below the surface, there is some light that comes through. It is comforting to know that there is open water above you. But as you approach the ship, which is tied to a pier, the light begins to fade. The steel structure of the ship blocks the moonlight. It blocks the surrounding street lamps. It blocks all ambient light. To be successful in your mission, you have to swim under the ship and find the keel, the center line, and the deepest part of the ship. This is your objective. But the keel is also the darkest part of the ship, where you cannot see your hand in front of your face, Oof. where the noise from the ship's machinery is deafening, and where it gets to be easily disoriented, and you can fail. Every SEAL knows that under the keel, at that darkest moment of the mission, is a time when you need to be calm, when you must be calm, when you must be composed, when all your tactical skills, your physical power, and your inner strength must be brought to bear. If you want to change the world, you must be your very best in the darkest moments. The ninth week of training is referred to as Hell Week. It is six days of no sleep, constant physical and mental harassment, and one special day at the Mud Flats. The Mud Flats are an area between San Diego and Tijuana where the run water runs off and creates the Tijuana Sloughs, a swampy patch of terrain where the mud will engulf you. It is on Wednesday of Hell Week that you paddle down to the Mud Flats and spend the next 15 hours trying to survive Oof. the freezing cold, Good the howling wind, and the incessant pressure to quit from the instructors. As the sun began to set that Wednesday evening, my training class, having committed some egregious infraction of the rules, was ordered into the mud. The mud consumed each man till there was nothing visible but our heads. The instructors told us we could leave the mud if only five men would quit. Only five men, just five men, and we could get out of the oppressive cold. Looking around the mud flat, it was apparent that some students were about to give up. It was still over eight hours till the sun came up. Eight more hours of bone chilling cold. The chattering teeth and the shivering moans of the trainees were so loud, it was hard to hear anything. And then one voice began to echo through the night. One voice raised in song. The song was terribly out of tune. <laughs> it sung with great enthusiasm. One voice became two and two became three, and before long, everyone in the class was singing. The instructors threatened us with more time in the mud if we kept up the singing, but the singing persisted, and somehow the mud seemed a little warmer 
and the wind a little tamer and the dawn not so far away. If I have learned anything in my time traveling the world, it is the power of hope, the power of one person, a Washington, a Lincoln, King, Mandela, and even a young girl from Pakistan, Malala. Oof. One person can change the world by giving people hope. So if you want to change the world, start singing when you're up to your neck in mud. Finally, in SEAL training, there's a bell, a brass bell that hangs in the center of the compound for all the students to see. All you have to do to quit, all you have to do to quit is ring the bell. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to wake up at 5 o'clock. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to be in the freezing cold swims. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to do the runs, the obstacle course, the PT, and you no longer have to endure the hardships of training. All you have to do is ring the bell to get out. If you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. It will not be easy. Start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never, ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. Yes, they and will. What started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. Thank you very much. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are 100% subscribing to Motivation Hub. Admiral McRaven leaving us with some very, very real, important life advice. Nothing that I'm going to say is going to make that any better whatsoever, other than I needed it as well. There's a lot of people out there that need this kind of, they need this kind of mentality. They need this kind of thought process and unfortunately there's a lot of people out there going through some things where they're getting ready to just consider themselves a failure and give up that's not ever what you want to do like he said don't ever ever ring the bell don't ever give up tomorrow there's always something better there's new opportunities that are going to come your way there's new things that you're going to be able to reach out and grasp and if you take the time and look around a little bit you'll notice that there's a lot more to life than just being upset or depressed about some things that you can't really change. You got to find a way to keep yourself motivated. If it's going back and re-watching this video a hundred times, which it will be for me, uh, then by all means do it. Download it on a playlist. This is phenomenal, phenomenal information right here. I will tell you right now, I would have never, ever made, none of us would have ever made it through the military, through the, myself, the Marine Corps. I would have never made it if it wasn't for the men and women that were right next to me. That teamwork and that camaraderie is vital. Nobody out there can do it alone. And there's one thing that, that I've been taught about how easy things can get when you have a good group of people around you is that everything that you're going through can be done the same way. Not just the military, normal life. I took a lot of what I learned in the military and I put it into my normal life and I surrounded myself with people that I would that I would definitely go to battle with. And those are the people that you want to be you want to have on your team. You want to have those people that want to see you successful. Forget the hate, forget the discontent, forget the whatever anybody's telling you to hate somebody for. All of that is that negative nonsense is just taking up time in your life that you don't need it to take up. So 100%, I support everything this man just said. This was a beautiful speech. Got me choked up a few times. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go back and rewatch it. I hope you take some of his words to heart for sure. If you guys enjoyed it, go show Motivation Hub some love on their channel. I'm going to drop it down inside the description. Hit the like button if you liked it, the dislike button if you disliked it. Check out one of my other videos up there. Subscribe right here. 
If you want to see more content, possibly your content. Till the next one, I'm highly combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. I love you to the moon and back. Peace.